ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate with your host, Kevin Perenio. As an owner and C-level executive for 20 plus years in finance, KP is here to serve you with all of his knowledge and experience. Whether you're a broker, realtor, or just interested in the economy, this is the podcast for you. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Corona, California. Well, I'm working late here. It's basically Tuesday morning because it is sales rally week for us here at PRMG. So I'll be away from this desk for the rest of my week, hanging out with all of our people. we got all of our county executives coming in for the wholesale and correspondent channel. And then we've got our retail uh, channel rally, which is mostly virtual. Uh, so lots going on this week. We're at the Balboa Bay Club Resort, which is right on the water in Newport Beach. Pretty cool venue. And uh, should be exciting. But there's tons of news going on. Let's talk about the jobs report last week. All right. 467,000 jobs were created. That was a huge beat. The estimates, I think, were like 150, 125,000, depending on who you talk to. Some people thought it was going to be uh, losses of jobs in this report because of the Omicron variant and what's been going on with that. But not only was it a huge monthly beat for the January jobs report, but there was an upward revision. Remember, I've been talking about all these upward revisions that have been happening with consistency now. Maybe there's just lag in data and reporting or whatever. But either way, we'll take the good news. Over 700,000 jobs were upwardly revised for the prior two-month reports. Something like, uh, geez, what's that number? 709,000 on top of the 467,000. Now, with all these jobs added, the unemployment rate actually went up from 3.9% to 4%. That's actually a good thing. More people entered the labor force because we have a strong uh, labor market right now and they're going out looking for jobs. So the unemployment rate went up despite all those jobs being added, which of course is extremely strong for our economy. Wages grew, hourly wages grew 5.7%. That's pretty big. You know, we've got inflation over 7% right now. So um, wage inflation is something that's very sticky and it's very unlikely that when people get hired for these jobs and they get these wages that they get their wages brought down later. So that is a good type of inflation where consumers, which are about 70% of our economy's GDP, which we just came off a 6.9% huge GDP growth reading for Q4, that stickiness, that consumer spending is one of the largest, if not the very largest part of our gross domestic product. Now we have inflation, which is the other side of this argument. Remember, the Fed has their mandate, right? They want to have full employment and they want to make sure that we keep inflation at bay. And uh, I think they are now fully saying that they are at full employment, obviously with you know 10, almost 11 million job openings, um, the quit rates, um, super high. People are you know, super picky about their jobs. Wages are going up. Now we're seeing jobs added, even in the middle of an Omicron variant spike in the month of January. We have a tight labor market, a strong labor market, and that's good inflation. The bad inflation, which we'll get to read this Thursday on Consumer Price Index, is things like rent, uh, heating, oil, gas, bills, those kinds of things, food, energy. What's going on with inflation? It's certainly hurting those at the lower end of the socioeconomic scale. That's going to be a problem, and that is going to be the big, big issue that the Fed has to face as they unwind the balance sheet, as they stop buying mortgage-backed securities through next month, and then start to raise the Fed funds rate. How are they going to do it without causing a recession? You know, I read something uh, uh, in the uh, Garrett McCauley report. I like to say McCauley Garrett because I only see Mike McCauley out there. I never see Joe Garrett on the road, but I know he's out there. But um, they wrote over the weekend... Um, a quote from Larry Summers, who's, um, you know, Harvard educated, uh, you know, former economic advisor for many presidents, he basically said um, that uh, he can't remember really any incident, hardly ever, where uh, inflation wasn't followed by a recession. Um, I think I butchered that quote. But um, having said that, um, it's very important to know that when you have these high bouts of inflation, that you usually have a recession to follow. We're talking about recession right now after coming off 
a 6.9% GDP read. I mean, we may have reached peak Corona, peak Omicron, peak cases, peak death, peak growth, peak inflation as we turn the uh, corner, and peak tightness in labor market. So what comes next? So some of you have seen my, uh, my hokey cheesy balloon analogy when it comes to talking about the economy. So let's Let's take that analogy and take it a little further, right? So we had this economy and um, the event um, which sparked the bear market, which sparked this recession was a pandemic. You know, a lot of times when these equity markets, you know, it's a process to build a top, but it's an event that creates a bottom. Well, we saw a bottom in our economy when the air came out of the economy when we had lockdowns, global lockdowns induced by a pandemic. So what the economy had to get reflated by was, at least in the U.S., was the Fed. So what they did is they took that balloon and they started blowing air into it and they reflated the economy. But think about putting that balloon on top of an air tank and hitting that thing. It brings it up super quick. So the economy starts getting pumped up and reflated with all of this liquidity. CARES Act, all these bills, PPE, uh, PPP plans, you know, all these different things that were brought into the economy to get people you know, pandemic assistance uh, to make sure they had their rent taken care of. All these things were up there. But at some point, every economy comes back down into a recession. It's part of the cycle. So what is it that's going to bring us into a recession? And how quickly will we go into a recession? You know, to use my cheesy analogy, the Fed is really going to be the ones that's helping put us into um, this recession. So imagine, remember, you took a piece of tape and you put that pin through the tape into the balloon. So it didn't pop, but you ease that air out. How big is the needle? How big is the pin? How big is the hole? Is it going to let out a lot of air? Is it going to let it out gradually? I think Fed Chairman Jerome Powell and the board want to ease this thing down for a landing, a soft landing as much as they can. But I saw a very interesting, uh, I guess, uh, video over the weekend. Uh, Chamath Palihapitiya, as you know, is a, um, a famed um, you know, activist, investor, hedge fund guy, early investor in uh, many things like Facebook and PayPal and all kind of Tesla, um, billionaire, right? Now, he brought up something very interesting, and he said that, um, you know, the Fed is raising rates at a time when China is um, facing its own housing crisis and facing um, recessionary uh, growth, maybe not a full-blown recession, but China being, you know, the second largest economy in the world, Germany seeing slowing growth. And of course, you know, you see the UK having to raise their rates, you know, another one of the G7 um, huge economies. Japan kind of treading water with negative real interest rates. Now, you know, you look at the bond market, you look at fixed incomes. What does this have to do with housing? What does that have to do with anything I'm talking about? If these other economies, remember, China like, basically funds the world's, you know, cheap labor and produces things. But if they're going through a recession, it will reverberate throughout the world and it will create potentially a recession in the U.S., especially at a time when the Fed is raising interest rates in the face of those recessionary pressures from around the world. That was what Chamath was saying. He brought up something interesting. He said, do you remember a couple of years ago in 2019 when uh, President Trump was you know, basically publicly lambasting Jerome Powell for raising interest rates? He said, what are you doing in the face of the same kind of situation around the world with other countries like uh, you know, Germany and China seeing slowing growth and us seeing recession signs, but we were at that time still raising rates and he was blasting them. And so you know, he said, you know, this was his quote, you know, if, if we were able to look past the Trump derangement syndrome, we could see why he was yelling publicly at Powell. We're kind of in a similar situation now. We are seeing our 10-year uh, treasury um, up over 1.9. It's been since December 12, 12, 12 of 19, since we saw that 197 handle. That's a big, massive area of resistance. Will the 10-year break through that? It'll be very interesting to see that. Um, those are some charts I looked at on Barry Habib and Dan Habib's uh, great site on MBS Highway. We will be looking at those fixed income securities. So, um, you know, inflation's a big deal. The Fed has a big thing to deal with how this impacts our interest rates and our housing market. Of course, for the meantime, you know, we're looking at rent. Rent's a huge part. Housing prices uh, going up. Those are huge pieces of inflation. And consumers can only bear so much. And I think that is really the lesson to learn. How much can they bear? 
We will find out. We shall see. Uh, don't forget, Thursday, Consumer Price Index and also Consumer Sentiment. I'll try and get you some scenery from the water. Hopefully the weather's nice. It's supposed to be hot. It was 85 degrees in Anaheim here yesterday, the highest temperature in America. And the Super Bowl is in L.A. this weekend. It's supposed to have 88 degree temperature in L.A. It's nice to see that mask mandates are being lifted in many cities and states around the country. Maybe we have finally turned the corner on this crazy ass stuff. Have a good one. Stay safe. Cheers. You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes and please leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.